This is Business Rockstars. I'm Brittany Lehman, and my guest today is Chad Dime, co-founder of Diff Charitable Eyewear. Chad, thanks so much for joining us today. Hi, Brittany. I'm excited to be here. Thank Woo-hoo. you for having me. So for those who have never heard of Diff before, yeah. um, tell us what your company is and what you guys do. Absolutely. So Diff is a charitable designer eyewear company. Um, going back to 2014 when we founded the business, the boys and I believed that we were going to create a fair market value for designer eyewear while giving back. Mm-hmm. That was the mission for Diff That's from amazing. day one. And was it hard to break into that space or was it just kind of a natural ebb and flow? Super hard. Um, the boys and I got our got our start and I'd say Diff is really was really born out of the music festival industry. It's actually a really interesting story. Um, but the boys and I were going to like 30, 40 music festivals a summer selling sunglasses and other types of eyewear and it was amazing. And we had, the, the idea of Diff was born there mm-hmm. really. But the challenge of getting into online wasn't just like, how are we going to sell online? We had all these other things going. And it was about taking what was important and, and all the other distractions and putting those to the side and focusing on what was important for us was building an online business. And mm-hmm. so super challenging. But we, we had a plan for it. And I'd say that my business partner, Zach, was the one that was not just identifying this as an opportunity. Because we all knew that influencer marketing and that Instagram was going to be an opportunity for marketing. He was the one that was saying, we're going to get the Jenners to wear our glasses. And I was kind of like, okay, well, how do you anticipate we do that? Right. <laughs> and he just started at the bottom. We all did. You know, we wrote some emails together. We, at the time back then, you could find links to emails in people's bios and things like that. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of the things that we were going after, were people we were going after were just through email. We were reaching out to them via email that they had put in their bio. But if I was writing... 10 emails a day, Zach was writing 100. Wow. You know, and if I was, if I ever got to the point where I wrote 100, he was writing 1,000. I mean, the guy just was like, here's my plan for Diff. Right. And he just was head down. I you love know? that. And that's how I eventually he got our glasses to be on the Jenners, like yeah. for real. That's amazing. That's crazy. Okay, so the name of your company is Diff Charitable Eyewear. Let's yeah. talk about the charity component to it. For sure. Yeah, we, Diff Charitable Eyewear, we decided to throw charitable eyewear in there because we wanted it to be at the forefront of everything that we do. Mm -hmm. Um, From day one, we always talked about how we would have a buy a pair, give a pair Mm -hmm. as part of our business. Um, I was an ambassador for Tom's going back to my college days. So I was super privy to the fact that Tom's was doing something really good and it was working for them. Mm -hmm. You know, people were really um, latching on to what their messaging was and, and supporting it. So from day one, we have donated a pair of reading glasses to someone in need for every pair of sunglasses that we sold. And in doing so, I, we've also established and, and began to build other programs, other things that help us be a charitable brand and that empower and educate people, not just hand someone a resource. Right. So it's, it's an evolution and it's a progression, like I said, and, and we're, it's at the forefront of what we do. I love that. Yeah. And tell us about what we have going on here. What are yeah. these? And then I know we have some bestsellers and some... So Diff Eyewear employees, now it's over 15 tailors in Yoru, Uganda. They all hand make these pouches. And they're and really, really well made. They're beautiful. And they're actually, everything's local. So all the fabric and everything that's in these pouches um, is sourced locally in local markets. Um, all the tailors are from that local community. And actually what really is incredible is Diff purchases these at a price that allows us to cover the wage hmm. and the production. So it covers the wage of the tailor and the production of the pouch. So nothing comes out of their pocket. Wow. The proceeds, the profit mm-hmm. from these pouches stays in that community and it actually goes towards a school. That's amazing. So yeah, it really excites me. And, and the thing I'll show you is really cool. Inside every pouch, when somebody receives it, there's a signed thank you card from oh, wow. somebody that made your pouch. That's amazing. So, yeah, all of them have them. So when you buy a pouch from Diff or if you find the pouch in a retailer, um, you get some sort of like humanistic connection to the individual that actually made this thing for you. That's so important. Put their name on it, signed it. You know, they, they did this. And so now someone gets to buy it and like really gets to receive that gift or whatever. But it, it, your dollar is doing something incredible if you support this program. It's that's really cool. amazing. And that's so awesome when passion and, and profit can combine yeah. and help the greater good. Right. And I kind of want to talk about um, also some of these amazing products that we have here. So let's touch on that first. Yeah. These are all frames, women's frames, but they're also, you know, some of them could be unisex. 
Um, but what we're also starting to do now is trying to learn how to speak to a men's audience as well. Mm -hmm. That's kind of, I think, the, the next evolution of diff. But what you'll have in here is you have one style that is more men's, a unisex style, some of our ladies' frames. And this is a collaboration that we did right here. This is the Maxwell frame. This was Justin Baldoni's collaboration. Oh, amazing. And another really interesting thing I love to tell about our frames is that every frame name comes from something personal. A lot of them are dogs. Aww. So the boys and I are, are dog lovers. We Love all have that. animals. And when we were trying to name these frames, we're like, well, where do we go? For, like, who, like, where right. do we put the name? <laughs> and we always have our dogs in the office. So we looked down and there was Riley. Aww. And we're like, that'll be a Riley. That's and then amazing. my dog, Coda, and Cruz are like, okay, three, first three names are down. Now we actually take polls on Instagram for people to name our frames. And um, it's really cool. That's so fun. <laughs> Give some character to them. Amazing. Yeah. And entrepreneurship is often glamorized, mm. right? Being your own boss yeah. and that whole thing. Um, kind of tell me the nitty gritty truth about being your own boss and running a huge company or a yeah. growing company. It's not that glamorous to me. It's actually just a lot of hard work and it's fun. Mm -hmm. I think that is, is, the tr is the honest truth. The other side of it that's definitely not glamorous that people don't talk about or you maybe you don't hear is, is the stress that you go home with at night. Right. You know, I've always said that the security that you get from having a good job is beautiful. Being able to go to work and know that you're doing a good job and, and that you did your, your work and you go home. I'm sure great employees always, and I was one of them, you know, you go home thinking about your job. But as an owner, you go home thinking about different things. Right. You know, you go home thinking about the business mm -hmm. and how you're going to open the doors tomorrow and keep the lights on. And, and then there's the people. Mm -hmm. If you're good owners and you run a good business, you're really concerned about the people. So I think that is kind of the the most stressful, least glamorous, if you will. But um, diff, pretty humble. Like we don't really get too caught up in I'd say the the glamour. We try to just do our jobs and go home and be with our families and right. Yeah, but it is a lot of hard work. Owning a business is crazy. And a lot of entrepreneurs um, are scared to start a business and they have that fear of failure. What tips or advice would you give those entrepreneurs? Uh, first of all, you mentioned failure. You have you have to accept failure. Mm -hmm. You have to be open to failure. If you, if you take those failures as lessons, like they say, this is pretty cliche at this point. You hear it in school, you hear it from family, I'm sure, but it's, it's so true. You have to go through and try 10 different things to try to find your niche or to try to find what's going to work for you. Um, I encourage you to fail and I encourage you to, to use that as a starting point. Don't call it quits after that unless the writing's on the wall. But use that as a starting point. It's just a, it's just a fresh start. Right. Um, I kind of talk about three key things that I think I would try to inspire you know, any entrepreneur to really take on. Number one is commitment. If you are not committed to what you're doing and you're treating it like a side gig, I always hear people talk about side gigs and I'm, I'm going to try to go into this. I'm going to try to build that. You can't try to do anything in a, in a half. You can't, you can't give it half of your energy. It's all or nothing. Mm -hmm. It really is, or else you pretty much, you can count on it being exactly what you're telling it it's going right. to be, just half of what its potential could be. Right. Um, so commitment and being there every day, mm -hmm. because a lot of people start their own business because they think, oh, I'm going to make my own hours. Well, I'm sorry. That's, you want to talk about the, un the not glamorous part about all this? You're not making your own hours. Right. <laughs> your hours are from, they're 24. Mm -hmm. It's when you wake up to when you go to bed. And then even in between. Right. So if you think that, that you're going to be making your own hours or doing your work from a boat in wherever island you like to be at, I'm, it's, not, it's not working for me that way. Right. You know what I mean? So commitment. And the second thing I always tell people is integrity. So you should do things with honest and good intention. Mm -hmm. That way you never have to look over your shoulder. Right. The boys and I have never had to look over our shoulder doing business. We've always done business black and white. Mm -hmm. And it's better that way. Try to have integrity when you do business and be committed. And then the third thing is give back. If I had to give people advice on starting a business now, it's please try to in integrate some sort of give back. Mm -hmm. It's really easy when you really think about it. It, it. Not easy in a sense. If you say you're going to do something, you have to do that. Mm -hmm. If I commit to making a one-for-one -one or that I'm going to sell a pair of sunglasses and give a pair of reading glasses to someone I need, you have to do that. Right. But it doesn't have to be that big of a, of a project for you. If you want to inspire others just by saying, hey, in my business, I'm going to do this much to give back. That's all I'm asking for mm -hmm. because it's a, it's, a, it's a snowball effect or whatever you call it. It's a domino effect. It's like people will follow. Right. So as an individual, if you're a sole proprietor and you're doing something, you're providing a service, or if you're starting a business, just inspire people. 
We all come from a generation of, of businesses that took our money and put it in their pocket and we didn't know where it went. Right. So I think our generation that's coming and the ones that are here now, um, they're kind of like, hey, what can we do to give back? Or what can I support that gives back? Mm -hmm. So I think those, those three things, if you can be committed and, and have integrity and, and try to do something that gives back, um, it's a good start. I can't guarantee you success, but it's, you know, it's a good start. I think those are good things for people. Absolutely. Well, I can't wait to see where you guys are. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for letting me be here. This is Business Rockstars. That was my amazing guest, Chad Dime, co-founder of Diff Charitable Eyewear.